I'm supposed to start with a statement, but it's from what, I, what I've heard. Yeah, no, I'll start with a statement. I'm Ed Foley. How you guys doing? Uh, Ed Foley, special teams. Um, I, you normally after the game, obviously, I would have some comments about what we did. So I'm, this is a, this one's a little new for me. So I'll just go ahead and open it up to questions. What, whatever you guys want to talk about. Hi, Tom. La yeah, lunch, lunch today. I'm, I'm still working on lunch. We got a couple leftover Chick-fil-A sandwiches in the fridge, though. I might have one of those. I, I just, it's my job. I, I honestly, like, that's, that's the way we've recruited, you know, Coach Rule, um, you know, and I have recruited, and all the staff has recruited, which is, you know, here's four identified players, okay, and you go see those four players, and then what do you do the rest of the day? So my day starts at a certain time and ends at a certain time, and I'd like to fill in that whole day with, um, seeing and meeting as many people within that time frame as we can and you know I don't miss many meals so we're trying to get a little local lunch and then you know but I like to get a local flavor because I think the local flavor for the food gives you some talking points with some of the coaches and some, something you can talk about beyond just like you know hey you know how's this guy and how tall is he and how fast is he you say hey where can I get lunch today so you know we're working that into the day making it making a day out of the that area to me is you know what we do and it's yeah it, it it makes it more fun but it's I think it's part of the whole process of figuring out the area the coaches the players and all that at Sean Callahan with us for line, uh, what did you just learn about the state of Nebraska the way football's played here just like the different cultures you kind of go into every different community you've been into like, the last month this state has an amazing passion and each like Understand you guys understand my background. I'm from New Jersey, right? So I've recruited for Temple, and just in recruiting New Jersey, now I've recruited New Jersey, and um, you know I recruited Europe and New York City and Philadelphia. So that that kind of Northeast area. So I'm recruiting New Jersey for Temple. It's a pro town. So there's a, like there's not a true identity for football there, and really in the in the Northeast, it's kind of a, a dynamic. But here. Every town is Nebraska football. Every person's – I mean, I didn't run into anybody that wasn't Nebraska football. Like, it's just driven for Nebraska football. So that part of it was a little eye-opening to me. In my, I, my family went to Boston College. I had my father uh, played quarterback at Boston College. My, my little brother played quarterback at Boston College. So I have a little bit of a, you know, a familiarity with what they do, but it's nothing like this. So it, the reception has been amazing um, just going town to town, whether it's – where you eat, or who you talk to, or when you know when you wear the N uh, around town or into the schools, people know you're there. Like that's, I'm not really used to having that happen. Um, again, I've been a little bit limited in terms of where I've recruited and who I've recruited for, but that's been that's been fantastic. It's it's um it really says a lot about what's going on here. Amy, just uh, Lincoln will start. Is it your eventual goal, however long it takes, to get to every high school, or I mean, you're already at uh, yeah, I, I would like to get to. I would like to get to every school. I don't know. The, I don't know enough about the area to to know if that's a possibility or a reality. I don't, that's not going to happen in one year, based on what I've seen. But um, my my goal, and again, like this was just one little piece of. Um, if you see the dynamic, and co you know, coach has got an unbelievable vision and plan. In case you don't I haven't noticed that already, but so it's like, okay, how can we cover ground? What can we do here? Well, I'm the special teams coordinator, obviously. Um, my work was done, very fortunately my work was done in December in terms of scholarship players for this class. So got an unbelievable kicker, got a long snapper to add to the mix of what we have here already. So like I'm not going out and specifically targeting 2023 players like the other positions. So I'm the natural guy of like, okay, Foles, what can you do? And I'm saying, let's just let me get in the car and figure out what's, you know, what's around here. Hit the local kids, maybe get some background on some of the kids that are coming in 20, 24 and 25. So it really didn't come out to be like this plan of like, hey, we're gonna get to every school in the state. It just came out and said, let's go do what we do, which is, you know, you be the local guy for now. But I think between the whole staff going out, we need to get to every school or just about every school in the state, but it might not be all me. It could be a bunch of us doing that. I, and I certainly see, like, when we go out again in the spring, 
more positional, uh, positionally targeted recruiting in the state of Nebraska. And, and I, you know, I, I got into Iowa and, and and South Dakota and Kansas City and Denver a little bit too. So like, but I th I see a little bit more of the staff coming back and doing that. But it's not. I mean, Coop, Coop and and Coach kind of handle that. They kind of directed me to go. You know, said Foles, go do you know, go do what we do, and and that's what I did locally. And I think it, I think it just garnered a little bit more attention because of. I, I, I tweet. I'm not a big Twitter guy. You're not going to believe this, but I'm not really. It's not really something that I do a lot of. But it, I, I, I hit it. Obviously, I hit a hit a chord with some of the local people when it, and it, and it was what it was. But it was um and it was fun to do that, and it was fun to get the reception and all that stuff. But um, I think the plan going forward is to get to as many as I can, but also understand too, like there's certain schools that are really have really good football players, and those schools may need a little bit more attention or a little bit more traffic from us based on the rules. Than, than than some of the other ones, so I think it's a combination of you know you know doing seeing as many schools as we can, but also given you know the direction to where the the players are that are going to fit us for the short term. You know Matt, well, Sandy Kuhn from the Omaha World Herald. You know Coach Wolf a, a, a while, a long time. Yep. How has your relationship with him evolved and changed uh, from maybe the first time you kind of saw him as an assistant to now? Well, it's you know it, it has it it's, it's really taken on two different lives because we were assistant coaches together. You guys know the history, I'm sure, but like, so we were assistant coaches together. He was the offensive coordinator and I was the tight end coach under Al Golden for three years in 2008, nine and 10. And then he, you know, he, we worked together. Um, I was a director of football operations in 11 and he was the tight end coach. And uh, then he left to go to the Giants and then he came back as the head coach. So that kind of changed the dynamic of our relationship. So it's really kind of, there's some bumps where you when you go from like a, a, a peer like somebody and because we were and we were pretty we hit it off pretty good our you know our wives get along and we're, we're like pretty decent friends we you know we do some things socially off the field together so we had that going but then you have this kind of friendship going and then he becomes your boss you know that, that changes the dynamic a little bit so we had some some conversations and some adjustments to our relationship there for that that early part of the of the time but it's the one great thing which I think you've probably seen and gathered from some of the other people that have been up here is you have a trust with players that you coach, people that you've been around with for a long time, and the trust over time gets stronger. Now, the trust is a two-way street, but like he trusts me to be here so because he's because he asked me to come, and I I was you know beyond fired up to to say yes to that. But it's you know so that's developed over the years to the point where now there's not any real when when we you know we just had a we're looking at recruit you know recruits this morning it's like there's no there's no grace period you guys have had this before you work where you're like what's his agenda what's her agenda like where are we trying to go with this what are you trying to, we're beyond all that so we're just about like what is the task at hand how can we do the best possible job at that and then go to the next job so it's evolved to say the least. A family. It's like working with family. It's like working with your brother. It's like working with. Now it's your brother that he runs the show. Now it's not my brother. With it's not the brother that I'm gonna, you know, take out in the backyard or whatever. But like, um, it's this is this is a family for us. This is and that's not a, that's not a cliche. It's not like, you know, fake or whatever. It's not some rah rah statement. We're we're really, we're really family. Like I mean. I was in Adam, Adam and Michael's wedding. Like we've been to each other's weddings. We've been to, you know, we, we've hung out with each other socially. We've been to each other's uh, relatives' funerals. You know, when you've been to somebody's funeral, it's or you've been to funerals together. You know, we just lost a, a former player uh, this past week, um, and a bunch of guys from here went. And uh, and and like, the, but but there's a, there's a camaraderie there. So it's really it really honestly is like family. Yes. I mean, I think there's a responsibility. I think we all have a responsibility, um, you know, as we go up the ladder. I mean, I'm a little further up the ladder than a lot of these guys, obviously, because I've just been doing it longer. But for all you guys, for wherever we work, I think that there's a response. I think we have a responsibility to bring the younger generation of coaches to a standard um, within the, with, 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 the, with football. I, I think there's a, you know, I think there's a responsibility to to bring Nebraska football to a certain place, to have a certain code in a certain way that we do things here to bring along and, and make them better than they were when they got here. I'm learning from them as well. So let's, it's not just me in a mentoring role because I'm learning a ton of things. I've learned a lot of, uh, I've learned a lot of evaluation uh, points from Evan Cooper. I mean, Evan Cooper 
if you haven't talked to him or you don't know him, is like one of the best evaluators of talent I've ever seen and just breaking down and listening to him talk about it. So it's not just me mentoring them, but I think we all have a responsibility to leave a place better than we found it and to bring the, you know, the younger generation along. Hey, Coach, Steve Mark with Inside Nebraska. The return game, punt return, kickoff return, when good teams are good at that, like what are they, what are they doing? Um, when here's here's the kickoff the kickoff return and the punt return are different animals to me even though they are both returns um, the kickoff the responsibility of the kickoff return is to put the offense in a position where it, it can it can have more success so as you guys know like the further we can get the ball out of the end zone towards the middle of the field you know maybe we, every once in a while we can get one uh, to go all the way but our responsibility is to leave the offense uh, in a position where they have a better chance to score so obviously the further we bring the ball out, the better that is. It's really hard to return kickoff to return kickoffs for a lot of big yards because the kickoff the kickers are really good and the kickoff return team. I don't know if you if you've never been on the kickoff return team, it's one of the hardest things to do. If you can just picture just guys running down at you full speed, and the college game is harder than the pro game because in the pro game it's five and five and guys run down the field. Uh, in the in the college game, man, there's twists and all kinds of bunches and. Guys can go away. The rules are different, so it's even harder in college. But I want to take the ball and bring it out as far as we can, as often as we can. And the two things uh, for for me and you know, Coach Rule and I talk about this. We're going to get a bunch of them to the twenty or the twenty-five, um, and then hopefully we're going to change the game once, twice, three times throughout the course of the year. Maybe it's a touchdown. Maybe if you get one to the fifty, you've just taken the offense and put them from a percentage of scoring from like. 20 to 50, you know, and we got you know, we got good kickers here too, so maybe even higher in terms of scoring points. So we want to do that. But what we can't do is we can't get tackled on the eight or the six or have penalties. So I'm going to put it directly on the players and be like, listen, guys, I'm here to return kicks. Me, that's Ed Foley's agenda. But I got a, I got a boss. So if we want to do this together, we have to catch the ball and get it north and south, and we can't have penalties. So we have to do and, – and now when I say catch it and get it north-south, that sounds simple. The ball is going to be kicked, squibbed, blooped, skied. You got to defend the field, defend the onside kick, defend the ball across the field. So, like, there's a, there's a little bit to that. But we're going to take a lot of time in getting that ball out – to the 20 and then leave it up to the, to the talents of the returner. So we're going to say, say to the returner, look, dude, we're going to get you to the 20. You got to, you're going to have to break a tackle or you're going to have to do something special to get it to go, to get it to go, go the whole way. But we're going to, we're going to return kicks. Like, you know, coach rule has designated me to be the special teams guy. Like that's for, you know, you guys can see between the lines, right? Like that's a, he could have, I coached the tight ends and did this when I was at Temple. But he, he thinks it's important enough that he said, Foles, I want you to just focus on, on the special team. So we've we got to return kicks. The punts, to me, the punt uh, return game is, is a puzzle of trying to block kicks and trying to return kicks. And, and the philosophy is kind of similar, but like it's not just catch the ball and return it. Because I want to block some kicks. We want Coach Rule wants to block some kicks. So when, you, when you're going to try to block kicks, that return probably is not – you're not blocking for that returner, so you're giving that up on that particular play. The net of that is if you block a couple of kicks, particularly if you get one or two early in the season, then you get the protection packed in, and now you can block them, and now you can return it. So the whole thing to me on punt return is really fascinating uh, in terms of being a game of blocking – Putting them on their heels a little bit, and then and then hitting the return. So we've had some success with both of those things um, at Temple and Baylor. So hopefully, you know, we can continue to do that. But again, the philosophy is the same. We're going to have a bunch of, you know, catch it and go, you know, eight, ten yards. Hopefully, we can change the game. But we can also change the game, you know, by blocking one. And, and understand this, guys. Like in in the, in football, statistically, if we catch the, the punt and we return it ten yards. We just got a first down. We just got the first first down for the offense. So if we can get 130, you guys saw it last night with that, you know, that punt return last night. Like you can change field position and really give the offense a chance to score. But our goal, our goal from play to play, when we return it, is get a first down. Get the first first down for the offense. Again, we can change a game with one or two blocks and one or two big returns throughout the year. Then I think we're going to be on the. We should be. That, that should put us in the league leaders. But that's not our goal. Is not going to be to go into it and say we want to lead the league in this. We want to be super aggressive, 
put pressure on the punter by trying to block one and then and then return it when we're not blocking it. That's a long answer, but that's a, that was a you know the return game to me is something where we can you know really do some damage here. Have you seen? Have you uh, got a chance to watch any of last year's um, Husker uh, returns and what were your initial reactions? To? I'm not really in a position. Yes, I watched them. Um, I saw a bunch of guys playing hard. So I think there's some things there that, that you know that we can work with. Um, the, the particulars of how we're going to do that and who that's going to be, I, no, I don't. I, I'm, I couldn't. I, I'll be able to. We can talk about that after the spring ball. That, uh, and Ken, KTV, you know, uh, have you, um, what's your philosophy about playing starters or key guys on special teams? Do you like that, or do you like to protect? My, I like to be employed. <laughs> So my philosophy is to listen to the head coach. Uh, but again, because I've been working with Matt, I, I kind of can answer that. I'm really answering this question for Coach Rule. Um, coach Rule's good with this, good with playing some starters. So I don't know if you remember the guys back from Temple, but there was a guy that was playing uh, last night, had a pretty good game, Hassan Reddick. He, he was a starter for us as a senior on the punt team. Him and, and um, Tyler Matikiewicz, um, who's playing for the Buffalo Bills. Now, he's, he's really a special teams player. He's not a household name in the NFL, but he's been in the NFL for like five years. Those guys were great like all American type players as seniors that played one team for us. They played on the they played on the punt team. And the punt team and the kickoff team are the two that coach will be like, you know, if you need to use a, if we need to use a starter for one team or so, we can do that. Um, but you know, I, you know, if there's a guy that's playing Will linebacker and he's the starting Will, but he's out in nickel and he's playing I don't know, 25, 30 plays a game, we'll be able to use that guy on multiple teams. But coach will let coach will let us you know, coach will let us use, you know, use guys, you know, use players. And, and he wants to get the best teams out there. So I've got to do a good job of utilizing, you know, skill sets. Like at Baylor, our starting left tackle on our kickoff return team was was the other side of the coin. He was a he had a really good skill set for that job. He didn't do anything else. He didn't play on offense. You know, they used to be like, "You really going to use this guy?" I'm like, "He's playing every kickoff return. He's the best I got." And he just that he was really good at that that particular skill. Um, and, we, and really, with the, that particular skill was, and that left tackle now, we're returning the ball to the right. He's dropping, and he's got to find his guy. And the guy's running over here, he's running over there, and he just had a great knack for how to block the guy. So um, we're going to try to play the best players um, at every position. But if there's a starter, if there's a guy that's playing defense and he's playing you know, 50 to 55 plays a game, I, I probably am not going to have him for more, than, for more than one team. Hi, Coach. Adam Kruger with CBS in Omaha. Hi, Adam. You're your kicker, you just signed Tristan Albano. What stands out about him, and could he possibly contend for a starting role in the fall? Um, he let, let me take, let me go. Can I go? Let me go to the, the second part of that, then the first part. The the kicking. Uh, evaluating the kickers and, and determining who's going to be the starting kicker or, or the starting punter for that matter is is a little bit I would say easier. It's a little cleaner than evaluating linebackers and DBs because it's quantifiable. So we can you know we can quantify. Um, you know how how good is he? How many kicks is he making? And, and then there's there's pressure kicks, and then there's teaching kicks. So I've got to do a good job of defining for those guys. Hey guys, we're working on our craft here, so it's not always a competition because they'll get they'll get you know that, that, they'll get worn out. But like, okay, hey guys, we're going to compete on these kicks. No, we're always going to compete when the defense and the offense. When we have the field goal team out there against the field goal block, and coach will let us bang a little bit on that on those, which is great because a lot of coaches won't. So we'll bang on that. Those will all be competitive kicks. So um, you know that that'll be quantifiable. So that part. Part of it is, you know, I've, I've had conversations with, you know, all the guys that are, that are in the room right now and guys, the best guys are going to play and the guys that do the best. Now, uh, the thing I like about Tristan is, is the, more than anything in terms of his leg talent, because he's extremely talented, it was his, the, the kicks that he made and the style of kicks that he made. So, uh, you know, one of the things that you can get, you get concerned about as a, you know, special teams coach evaluating kickers is you see a guy that's got a huge leg but he's not great under pressure because he hasn't just hadn't faced that much pressure. Well, heck, that guy that guy's faced a ton of pressure and and come through and did it on this field. So and that's really important for me, like in terms of seeing him make the big kicks. And it wasn't just the the ones that he made out here on in the final, which were huge. But he he had done that throughout his career, where he's had some real pressure kicks that he's made. So that was the difference to me in terms of what separated. Now, you know, know this too. Like I've I've been doing this for you know whatever twenty years. So I'm connected to some guys that have seen him kick and that have worked with him. So I made those calls to, to check on him beyond just his high school coach. So, you know, he checks out, he checked out every single marker. Everybody I talked to about him was like, this guy can, can handle the pressure. So I'm, fire, I'm fired up about him. A couple more. Coach, Brian Christopherson with 24-7. Can you speak to 
Brian Buscini and what your early impression of him as a punter? Yeah, I've, I've, I've spoken to Brian. Brian's been Brian's a real, real professor, real professional uh, approach to, to his game, and I've watched him. I think he's really good. So we've talked about, you know, and again, I'm, I'm not promising anybody any jobs. We've got some other other punters in the program, so we're gonna we're gonna make it a competition. But but he's he's a good he's good, and he's good beyond just. Um, uh, leg strength because he's got a good leg. I like the fact that he fought through some injury last year. I talked to him about that um, on what his mindset was getting through that because I thought that was really unselfish of him. But if you watch him on film, he really tries to challenge himself with regards to direction. So one of the things that we can do to use his talents not just is you know, to smash him down the field, um, or to, or to, he's also really good in the dropping him in, you know, in the ten yard. He's a different ball that way. So he's got he's got the big leg. He can drop him inside the ten, but he's good directionally too. That can really help us in terms of he can get that placement the way I think he can. Um, it'll prepare him for the NFL, but it'll also allow our coverage teams to really focus on certain spots on the field, which can really help us. What was uh, yesterday like for you as a Philadelphia sports fan? It's huge. You know, I, I don't know if you, um, if, any, if anybody's ever been released midseason. So I had the, you know, fortunate or unfortunate ability to get released this year by the Carolina Panthers after four games. I think it was God's will that I got released during a Phillies playoff run. So I was able to go to the fifth game of the national champ of the national championship. I was eight rows behind the dugout when when Bryce Harper hit that home run. And then I was at, on, on the flip side, I said, I took my son out of school, which my, my wife and I had a few, some words about it, but took him out of school, went to the, the World Series game, and the Phillies got no hit the first time in a long time. So seen seen both sides of that. But he called me, my son, my, my one son, I'm beyond blessed to have one of my sons working here with us in, in operations as a young entry-level guy. And, uh, and my other son called, I think, four times during the game uh, just to check in and make sure I was okay. And... You know, talk we, again. Big Hassan Reddick. He's a big. Hassan's been great to to us and the family. And Sean Bradley's on the team. So there's you know some guys that we had coached over the years that were that were playing in that game. Uh, I don't know. On the other side was Clay. Jo Clay Johnston was covering kickoffs on the other side, who played for us at Baylor. So my son called me to tell me about how Clay was doing as well. So it wasn't just like the Eagles are good, but so my my family's like tuned into the Eagles and then all of our kind of our former players that are in the NFL. So he was fired up on both both ends on that. We had a couple conversations during the during the game. But thank you for bringing that up. I've been there. I, I went to the, uh, uh, they went to the, uh, I took my two sons. I had not taken, I'm sorry, I'm like, am I, am I, can I go or not? Yeah. <laughs> you guys got somewhere to be? Um, so I took my kids, my, the first time I took my son, my son's a sophomore in high school now, and, and the, all, everything that you hear about the Philadelphia in terms of the fans, if you've never been there, it's probably actually worse than they're saying. So I, didn't, I wouldn't take, as a father, I wouldn't take my son to, the, to, to, the, to an Eagles game when he was growing up. I just I, I wouldn't. My dad took me, so I knew what it was like. So I was like, I'm not doing that to my kids. Um, but I took them to the, to the championship game when they beat the Vikings to go to the Super Bowl. And so we were at that game when they won. And we had a recruiting function the night before. We're in the hotel with a bunch of Vikings fans. And my son is, well, I don't know, at that time was like maybe 11 years old. And he's listening to, li listen to the fans talk about, we're coming in and Vikings fans coming in. We're coming to take this over. And he's like, Dad, what are they saying? Like, why are they saying that? Why are they acting like that? They know they're going to get killed, right? I'm like, I don't think they really know how it's going to be, but we maybe, should, maybe we should share that with them. But that was the, the next day we went to the game. That was the first time I had taken him as a parent. Um, to, to an Eagle game, so he was, you know, he remembers that. And that would, so this was the first, this was the first one that I hadn't been to when the Phil, when the Philadelphia team made it. So when in '80 when they went, I was with my dad at the game uh, when they beat Dallas, and then ended up going. I didn't go to the, the Super Bowl, but I was at the NFC Champ. So it's a big family thing for me. Huge Phillies fans. Um, so you know, you, you, you obviously you struck a chord. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Not unless somebody's going to sponsor me so <laughs> and if anybody's out there and they need a scribe let me know i can help you guys out be happy to mark the down and distance or whatever give you some insight into the special teams <clears throat> Yeah, it's not a belief. It's, it's it actually, it actually is the way that it, it's actually the way that it is. But although I will say this, I did live. We lived in, um, we lived in North Jersey. So I lived in Demers for a little bit when I was working at Fordham and at, and at Hofstra. So I spent some time living and working in New York City. It's it's to, it's totally different. Um, but 
there's there's good, there's good and bad. I'm not I, because I lived in both places. I'm not going to bash North Jersey because I lived there for a while. And you know, my 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 older son, my son that works here with me, is actually a Yankees fan because he lived for eight years and when we were in Demarest, and I refused to let him go to Mets games. He was like, my friend wants me wants me to go with, go to the game with him. I'm like, what game? He's like, Mets. I would say, nope. I'm not going to the Mets game. So if you want to take the Yankees game, you go to the Yankees game. We're not going. Not, I refuse to let, allow you. There's no chance you're going to become a Mets fan. So he's now, he's now a Yankees fan because of that. But I but I do I did live in in North Jersey and had to deal with all the the, uh, the we ours the area code was 609. Um, you know, at the time, so the, the 201 people would say, which is North Jersey, would be like, oh, that's so 609. And I'd be like, really? Like you? I'm sitting right here. Like you don't got to do this in front of me. Um, but but you know what's funny because when I got I, I knew I kind of knew this but like when I got here, um, you know there's some really good like I, I, Nebraska was huge for me when I was a kid like you know Keith Jackson and the and the, and the Oklahoma Nebraska game was one of the one of the Nebraska was one of those teams that you could see on TV it wasn't like it is now where like there's 14 games on the weekends like you had the ABC game and you had Keith Jackson and Nebraska was on that game obviously the Oklahoma game every year but there was other games that we used to see in Nebraska and then you know Mike Rozier was right down the street from us and you know there's uh, I, I ran into um, uh, Rich Glover and the, you know and, and the Peter brothers like there's some there's a bunch of dudes from from Jersey that came out here uh, Irving Fryer over the years that like we were kind of grew up near us so there's a there was a real connection for me coming from New Jersey to be part of this program you know when Matt was when Matt was talking about you know potential landing spots I was like oh please let it be Nebraska so I'm so I'm so happy that uh, so happy that we're here thanks guys appreciate you